I sat in the mayor's office with my arms crossed, grumbling a little until dad bumped my head with his elbow. I was here without a choice listening to a boring meeting about how to proceed with things and the current condition. Dad had decided I wasn't allowed to leave out of his sight anymore. He kept his keen watchful eye on me, always. Well, after what you've done numerous times, can you really blame him? The whole thing was boring. You'd think of something crazy impossible, if some crazy impossible event had happened, it'd be more exciting. But honestly, that was dying of boredom. At this point, I'd rather have things go back to normal and return to school again. They were currently talking about the emergency rations and what to do with them. Eventually, they decided on locking them in a room with an electronic lock that needed a keycard to be opened. With Dad, Pitch, and the mayor each having a key, each keycard had a different code for the reader to identify it. Now it sounds like something out of Metal Gear, <laughs> different keys and keycards. The room was apparently used for official documents pertaining to the town. I didn't really understand it much, since I was only half listening. I glanced towards the door. I had made a promise just a few hours ago that I wouldn't get into any sort of trouble or run off on my own. But this was just so boring. I wanted something to entertain myself, something to keep my mind from thinking back to her. My angel. Think about anything else, anything but her. Think about the others, about Riker, Reed, Tone, Sierra. Sierra? What about her mom? Hey, even though I spoke quietly, everyone seemed to hear me. What about Sierra's mom? She hasn't returned home. Shouldn't we go try to find her? We need to worry about the people in town first. Once we've managed a set system so we'll be okay, then we can start worrying about outsiders. <laughs> Pitch is always a bitch. I know it's a pun and it's lame and it's stupid, but it's true. I'm sorry to say, but we need to focus on those in front of us. So you're just gonna abandon her? No, Evan. They turned away from me. They had no interest in continuing this conversation. And I wasn't fine with this. Sierra's mom was out there and probably needed help now. Waiting could make us arrive too late. I made sure no one was looking and then dashed out the door. How does no one ever see him escape these rooms or situations? I guess they don't pay as much attention as they think they do. In the end, I was standing in front of the road that left town, flashlight in hand. I gulped a little as I looked at the darkness in front of me. Even with a set path to follow, it still had an eerie feeling, like if you didn't pay attention you could get lost forever. Hey, snap out of it, Kogan. I got shoved a little, which pulled me from my stupor. Thanks, I needed that. It was only Reed and I this time, so I knew to expect a quiet walk, but I trusted him. He was brave and unfazed by basically everything, so he was dependable. Focus, or trying to, es to rescue someone. Well, we don't know if Sierra's mom is in trouble or not. That's not what you told me to get me to sign on to this little expedition. I said could. You did not. Okay, so maybe I did make some assumptions and use that to motivate Tone into not wanting to go, which in turn... Oh, Tone into wanting to go, which in turn made Reed agreed, because he didn't want his sister to come. Whatever, let's just get this over with. And with that, we stepped out of town, following the dark road. So, how far up are we gonna go? I say we stop when we reach the next town. Well, how far away does this one work? Is it just the next town over? I kind of forgot what they said. Hmm. I frowned at the thought. Walking to the town would probably take hours, but it was probably necessary to make sure. As we walked, I tried to only focus on the road. I didn't want to let my mind wander or my flashlight either. Hey. But after 20 minutes of silence, I got bored. What is it, Kogan? Reed was being as unfriendly towards me as ever. I just thought I'd make conversation. It passes the time. Fine, what is it? What do you think is going on? With all this darkness? Yeah. Beats me. Also doesn't matter. Point is we have to deal with it now. I suppose. A realistic response. I wonder if maybe we activated some curse or something like in horror movies. But I suppose if this were a horror movie, more people would have died? Don't trivialize death. Reed shot me a powerful glare. Yeah, did we ever find out what happened to the people that we saw in the forest that were dead? I mean, obviously they died. 
But did we know who they were? Hmm, nothing else was really said about that. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I decided to stay silent for a while. I didn't want to make Breed mad. We kept walking and walking, but we saw nothing. I'm sorry. For what? Well, didn't I make you mad? The death thing? I nodded. I was never good with Reed. We were always fighting, but that was something I felt I should change. Fighting while this was going on would be stupid. I still don't like him, but I'd be the bigger person and try to look past everything and make peace. Well, it's about time you started doing that. It doesn't really matter. What? Then what was with that glare? It has to matter to you. You're about to stab me. It's nothing, Kogan. Forget it. I walked in front of him and stopped, forcing him to look at me in the eye. Hey, I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to put the past behind us. The least you could do is act a little friendlier towards me. I can't. He brushed past me and continued walking. I glanced down at the black pavement. I guess that makes sense. We, we do have a lot of bad history. I shook it off and kept walking. All of this darkness and the fog was just starting to play tricks on my eyes. Eyes, I could swear. I could see purple eyes in the fog. It was all unnerving, staring at darkness so long. It makes you see things. It messes with your head. I glanced at Reed. He seemed calm and collected. You're amazing. <laughs> Getting a little complimentary of him, he's probably going to start to get a little nervous around us. What? Well, I just mean you're so strong. I don't swing that way, Kogan. <laughs> I thought he might take that the wrong way. I just stood there dumbfounded as Reed continued walking. That's not what I went. That's not what I meant. Then just say what you mean. You can deal with this all happening. It doesn't even phase you. You stand tall, and no matter what happens, you deal with it. And here I am, constantly on edge and freaking out over everything. I said I want to be a medical examiner, and then I freak out at the first dead body I see. I'm pathetic. No wonder Sasha dumped me. I wouldn't say that's weakness. Being able to feel emotions. It's not a bad thing. Well, to me it is. I'd much rather be able to just shrug things off. I don't know if that's a good thing. Why wouldn't it be? Reed stopped again. Some maniac could run out of the woods and behead you, and it wouldn't faze me. Is that really such a good thing? To be so detached? It wouldn't faze you at all? I think that is slightly concerning, if it didn't phase you in the least. I mean, I can understand you didn't like me very much, but I, I, I think that would at least give you a moment's hesitation. That's really morbid. You talk about the fact that I can't feel emotions like it's a good thing. I, however, don't know, because I don't feel. So is Reed supposed to be like a sociopath or something? Kinda sounds like it. What about Tone? Tone is the only thing that draws my emotions. Everything else could vanish and I wouldn't care. How nice for all of us, that we mean so little to you. I don't know how to explain it, I just can't seem to feel anything for anyone else. Complete detachment for everything. Before you asked me to be a little friendlier with you, and I told you I couldn't, this is the reason it has nothing to do with any negative feelings against you. It's just I hold nothing, neither kindness, friendliness, or resentment towards you. So I'm sorry, but I can't. I just can't bring myself to get any emotional reaction when things are not about tone. Yeah, so he only feels emotions with his sister. That's a bit strange. That must suck. I suppose it does. But it looked like you were mad when I talked about people dying. Are you sure? That's just your perception and assumption. It has nothing to do with fact. So you never felt emotion for anyone than tone? Well... You're being annoying. That sounds like an emotional response. The desire to get away is hardly much of an emotional reaction. It is simply a feeling of unpleasantness, almost emptiness if you want to call it that. Jeez, you're bumming me out. You started this. You never answered my question. In fact, you dodged it. I did have someone else. Really? Who? My father. He died. I'm... Forget it. I don't want to hear it, since it doesn't matter. Jeez. I told you. 
and I'll feel those types of emotions. So you have no reason to apologize. What about your mom? What about her? Well, you care about Tone and your father, so what about your mother? She's probably the one I feel the most attached about. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't like your mother either. Really? If you're asking if I love her, no, I don't. <laughs> That's cold. But, I don't know, she does seem like an odd woman. Though it feels slightly different from how I feel about you, for example. That... Being around either of you gives me that desire to want to be somewhere else. Thanks. The silence continued on. Reed scratched the back of his head. <sighs> hmm? What was wrong with him? I'm not really good with keeping conversations going. I'm not used to it. I probably smiled a bit. Despite how much I still didn't like him at the present, we might be able to at least stand each other someday. But what are you planning on doing in the future? The future? Yeah, you know, once you finish school. What about you? I've already decided I'm going to become a coroner, and I blame my dad's influence. Now, stop avoiding and spell. I don't have one. Hmm? So I can't answer your question. What? I was going to ask more, but Reed started to pick up his pace. It seemed like we were done talking. And then, from the darkness, I saw something. It was a light, and it was coming towards us while he barely cleared the road. What? What is that, a car? Reed and I both went to the side of the road as we watched the light get closer and closer, until we were being blinded by the headlights of the black truck. It was traveling slow, almost at a snail's pace. I gulped. Honestly? I honestly was worried about who could possibly be driving it. Are they pulling over? I was really getting worried now. I didn't bring anything like a weapon this time. I think they're just gonna slow- I think they're just going that slow all the time. Finally, they got close enough for us to get a good look. I pointed my flashlight at the truck, and then as if reacting to it, they stopped. The truck died. I glanced at Reed. He was stone-faced still. I wish at this moment I had his detachment, since right now the only thing going through my body was fear. This is strange. Reed and I walked up to the truck. Reed shined his flashlight inside the truck. There was no one inside. Who was driving this just now? No one, it seems. Ghosts? Don't be silly. Although... I really didn't like this truck. I want to get away from it as fast as possible. Reed smashed open the window and locked the door. What are you doing? Having a look inside. The key was still in the ignition, but the truck was off, and there didn't seem to be anyone at the wheel recently. But the truck had been on, that much was clear. It was still warm, in fact. Hey, look at this. I wasn't sure I wanted to, but nonetheless I looked at where Reed was pointing. It was on the back of the seat cushion near the base. Is that? Please tell me it isn't. Yeah, it's blood. I stepped away from the truck, shaking my head. This was getting too much. First the darkness, now a ghost truck, and finally... What are you doing now? Reed was still looking at the truck, trying to find out who owned this thing. No luck, no information at all. I was relieved when Reed stepped out of the truck and we continued walking down the street. That was really weird. This is weird, <laughs> that's to say the least. What could possibly be stranger than what we've encountered already? What is? We should have seen the tunnel by now. The tunnel? Oh wait, yeah. Just before reaching the end of the town's territory, there's a short tunnel, but a tunnel nonetheless. You think we would have reached it by now? It isn't very far, I've walked to it before. We should have reached it 20 minutes ago at least. We should turn back. Something isn't right. I nodded in agreement. Yeah, I, I knew it. As soon as we started on this road, I could tell that there's gonna be something supernatural about it. Like, somehow we're disconnected from the rest of the world at this point. I don't know how it works, but it's like we're in our own little dimension. It took a while, but we reached the outskirts of town again. But Reed stopped and turned to face me. 
You realize it, don't you? Realize what? That truck. We never passed it again on the way back. A chill ran down my spine just thinking about it. Reed was right. We didn't see it a second time. I shook my head. I didn't want to think about that truck. We'll have to go looking for Sierra's mom another time. I nodded my head and Reed and I parted ways. Huh. <laughs> well, that was very mysterious. I picked up the light meal on the plate. Dad seemed to have embraced the ra ration food mentality. I was still upset at him, but I did want to live so eating with him was a forced action. Whenever he tried to start up a conversation, I purposefully ignored him. That is not smart. Or close it off with a one or two word response. I just wanted more freedom. I wasn't a little kid. I could take care of myself. <sighs> Evan, how would you like to deliver some food to your mother? Dad's going to be trying to lift up my spirits by allowing me to get away from him for at least a little while. I didn't need to be told twice. I wanted out of here in a way as... And anyway, I want out of here in any way possible. I was going to take it. Oh yeah, that's right, his mother's at the library. I forgot, she's doing some research, which... I'm not sure how much research could help you out in a situation like this. The library was in the center of the town, next to the town hall. It was a large building filled with books. It was the largest building in town, in fact. We prided ourselves as being the largest library in the district. Which wasn't that big of an accomplishment, but it was something, I guess. I stood in front of the large doors. I had so much to talk to Mom about. So much I needed help with. I was glad that Dad gave me this chance. I reached for the door knob. What do you think you're doing? I turned around, pitch was behind me. Such interaction will only create interference with their work. Please refrain from such actions. Wow. Can you uh, step off a little much, maybe? I just want to see what- I just want to see my mom for a second. For the good of the town, I must not allow this. Who are you to say what we can and cannot do? Come on, it would probably help. No. You're being unreasonable. A little sacrifice is required at times for the good of the future. Please understand. Pitch grabbed me and pushed me away from the library. Well, we had orders from our dad to deliver food to our mom, so she really should back off. Now run along and stay out of trouble, especially with my children. I was going to get her for this one day. First the murder charge, and now this. You were turned away, it seems. I stopped. Noelle stood in the alley. What do you want? I honestly was out of patience. Don't you feel like something strange is going on? Don't you think the mayor is acting different? Pitch, and your dad too? My eyes narrowed. Just what are you suggesting? I think they're hiding something. Something from all of us. <laughs> well, not all of us. I'm warning you. I might be on bad terms with my dad, but I still care for him. Poor naive Evan gets used by everyone. <laughs> this girl was starting to piss me off. And just what makes you think that you, they're hiding something. Huh? Uh, can you speak up a bit? I don't understand whatever the hell you just said there. What? What? What did you say? Was that some kind of other language? It didn't sound like anything I'd ever heard. It's okay if you don't understand yet, Evan. Soon everyone will. <laughs> Soon everyone will. What are you talking about? I'm an oracle. I can see the future, you know. So I know what's going on. I've been blessed. I can see the future. I was given this gift from the heavens so I can watch the destruction of all you devils. I was blessed. The angels... I can see them in a far off land. I want to go there, to see that world. This world feels like nothing more than a passing phase. I can see all the evil. The mayor, Pitch, and your dad. They're the worst. I grabbed her by the collar and held her up in the air. Don't talk bad about my dad. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. The look of horror on your face. You'll see the truth. Everyone will. 
the world. <laughs> it will all end. Shadow Witch, the darkness will consume all. All you devils shall get yours. The witch who caused the shadows to come will kill you all. She'll free us from our suffering. It will all end. I let go of her. She had gone crazy. Umbra. Yeah. Well, that was certainly creepy.